Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back uh, to this project management course. Being a part of this NPTEL MOOC series of lectures, and I am Raghunandan Sengupta from IIT Kanpur, IME department. So, you are basically uh, giving a brief preview and going to the depth about uh, the project management as a concept and how the different concepts of PERT and CPM. Obviously, we will go into the details later on, they are, they are used in different type of project management. Then how the concept of cost, then the schedule, then the budget constraints all come into the picture in the qualitative sense, how we do that from the quantitative point of view, I will come to that uh, in the later classes. Then we briefly discussed the concept of agile um, project management and what is the concept, how it basically consists everything in a very holistic manner. So, if you consider the project management and its objectives, so basically it consists of a mission. So, what is the work which you have to do? It can be as I mentioned in different examples, it can be trying to basically build up a hostel or trying to basically come up with a marketing plan for selling a car or trying to build up a bridge or, or trying to send the rocket into the moon. So, there are different type of projects. So, it will basically have an objective. So, objective may be for social service, for trying to basically increase the bottom line of the company or try to increase the cost. It can be also as I mentioned, try to be the reduction of the overall risk of, the, of a project. So, risk and, and, and the concept of positive returns would definitely be two different concepts. So, you will basically have the project objectives which should definitely match with the business objectives of the company or the organization, whether it is government or private or say for example, semi-government whatever it is, it should definitely match and so and also there should be a social objective. So, obviously for any work, whether you are trying to build up a house, a school or a bridge or a nuclear plant or try to sell a product, whatever it is, there should be some social objective, which may not be very tangible in general, but we will try to basically give some quality pillars for that. Obviously, keeping in mind that the project management as a course would deal more on from the quantitative point of view of the per CPM and the different concepts which we use. So, project objective would be basically for successful project completion, successful use of the project uh, results. So, how the results of the projects are, are utilized in trying to basically have a positive output for the business objective based on which the project was basically uh, planned. So, of the big business objective of the business is the overall thing and under that you have different projects. So, we will we'll try to basically dovetail how the project objectives meets the overall business objectives in the general form. And successful implementation of the project and the business should definitely have a positive effect on the social structure or the social norms. So, what are the positive benefits from the social point of view? So, all these three points, the project, the business and the social should be aligned in such a way that they accrue positive benefits to, to the overall system. There are normally three sets of objectives as I just mentioned and they are the project objectives, the business objectives and the social objectives. So, obviously, they may be different, but they should not be at loggerheads such that the overall uh, basis uh, based on which the project management work is being done does not defeat the purpose of the overall business objectives as, as well as the social objective. The objectives would normally include a precise definition of the scope of the work on all the three fronts, both for the project as well for the project um, objective point, from the business objective point and from, from the social objective point also. Successfully completion of the project would mean how successful is the project with respect to the end user. So, whoever the end user, the customer is for whom you have basically started the project, 
that should give the maximum benefit or the best benefit to the end user. Trying to basically start a school should mean that the students of the locality get the benefit. Trying to start off, say for example, a bridge means the people in the locality should be able to utilize that. Trying to start a health program means the people in the village or the locality or the district or the city should basically or the, or the state should get the benefit of utilizing the, the hospital or the health benefits which have been started as a project. Successful use of the project results should basically be used in such a way that they give, give us or the people who are running the project the maximum experience, the maximum um, knowledge so that in any future when you again start a similar or different type of project, the overall benefit should accrue in such a way that it gives us the maximum positive output. Output means either what, what I am mentioning about the output means either if your profit motive so called profit motive or the profit concept is important, it should basically come out in, in such a way that at the same time it is meet, meeting the project benefit, the business benefit, the ob objectives what we are talking about and the social benefits of the objectives. Successful influence of a project on society should be such that in the long run the uses of the project as I mentioned few examples just few minutes back gives the maximum social benefit or the social objectives are met to the maximum possible ex extent. So, classifications of the projects can be of different type, they can be small or large pro uh, projects or can be mega, mega projects, they can be construction projects, they can be research projects, they can be related to health sciences, they can be related to build, uh, civil engineering, they can be related to mechanical engineering they can be related to government policies whatever it is. Say for example, the government wants to start the Aadhaar card. So, in that case it will be required that the government does the work in such a way that it is taken up as a project and gives the maximum benefit accordingly. Now, in the area of engineering and construction it can or the research development it can be say for example, Toyota is trying to build up a car. So, in that case the design and, and, and functioning of the car and trying to basically implement that car into the industry. So, as that it is basically can be floated into the market can be taken up of the project and obviously it should mean that it has all the benefits from the social point from the business point as well as the project point of view. Classification of project from the engineering and the construction can be and the important point should be no uncertainty as to whether the project objectives can be technically met or not. So, there should not be any uncertainty or ambiguity. So, if the engineering focus is the main point of the project, then the points or the technical specifications and other should be mentioned in such a way. So, there should not be any dichotomy in that. Uncertainty connected to resource consumption, schedule, scope of the work, who will do what the work, how the work should be completed, what is the plan of the, of the, of the work which is to be done, what are the engineering specifications, what material should be used, everything should be very specific to the point for the engineering project. Because any change in that would basically mean that in the overall plan of the things, your project implementation would be difficult. Because say for example, if you want to start off a bridge and if the specification of the cement is not up to the standard, so obviously it will have an effect in the overall long duration life of the bridge. So, so these are, are many of the different important issues related to the engineering project a person should definitely remember. For research and a development one, they should be broken, they can be broken down into product development, system development, organization development and new knowledge development because research is totally different from an existing engineering project being floated. Because research would mean that you are basically venturing into an unknown area, an uncharted area. So, how you will basically try to utilize the knowledge, the organization development, how is taking place and the system development as you are trying to do that work should be taken into account such that any incremental knowledge or incremental information which comes should be, ut should be utilized in, a, in, a, in such a way that the overall project, business and the soci societal benefits and the objectives are met to the maximum possible extent. So, if you see the, the, the chart, it has basically the organization's goal, whatever the goals are. You have the organization basically giving its feedback to meet the organization goal and apart from that you have the planning, the control and the leadership which basically all these four 
for heads or subheads, whatever you say, the planning, the organization, the leadership, and the control should be done in such a way that point number one, they are independent of each other, but at the same time, try to basically influence the other in the positive sense, such that the overall benefit for the organization goal based on which you have planned a project should give the maximum benefit. Characteristics of project managements are generally a person heads the project and the cross functional and, and the um, uh, work is such that it is goal oriented, there is a viewpoint that there is a certain goal which has to be met. It embodies the characteristics of the project based on which the overall team under the leadership of the person who is heading that works. The focal point of the project management is basically the project manager. So, which means that the business entity for whom the project is working may be different from the project manager, but the interrelationship between these two persons, if it is not good or if it is definitely not up to the mark based on which you are trying to work for the project, it means the overall benefit for the project output or the objective with respect to the business output or the objective basically does not mean the overall plan based on which the project has been taken. Due to its multifunctional work, the cross-functional areas reflect the work focus as desired in the project. So, say for example, the HR person, the DM, say for example, the design person who is working both for the company as well or for the department as well as for, for the project should do the work in such a way that there is no di dichotomy in the overall perspective based on which the project has been taken. So, the overall functioning can be both vertical and horizontal uh, for the overall organization structure, but the, the, the relationship between the project manager, the actually the business part manager and the persons who are working in different fields in the project as well as in the business should be such that they give the maximum output which is positive in the overall thing. The project manager is responsible for integrating the whole work. The project manager negotiates with the functional managers in order to bring the, 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 the output of the project in line or in, in, in tandem with the business output or the objective, such that the business objective which is there should also meet the social output. So, your main focus would be the business obviously, if you are, you are, main, if you are working from the point of view of, of a company. And if you are obviously working from the point of view of the government, so obviously the societal impact, positive impact which you want to give to the society depending on what projects you, you take up or the government takes up should definitely be maximum. So, the, the interrelationship between the project management team, the project objective, the business management team or the business objective and the so called social objectives should match to the maximum possible extent. The project manager focuses on delivering a particular product or service at a particular certain time using the resources of the business environment or the business under whom the overall project is being developed such that the overall benefit of completing the project on time considering the cost, the time schedules or everything is taken into consideration should basically give the maximum benefit to the organization or the business. In general, if we go into the into deep, we will try to see that the project management has two chain of commands. Basically, the, the two chains of command would be on, on, a, on say for example, on a vertical and a horizontal um, space. The vertical would be that under the project management, all the people who are involved in the project would be involved. And the horizontal one would be that the project management would be liaising with the business team as such in order to understand what is the focus of the business such that the project management concept is dovetailed into the business concept to give us the maximum benefit. The responsibility awards etcetera are shared amongst the members of the project management team. So, whatever the responsibility that is passed on from the project man manager on to his or her team such that everybody takes the equal proportions of the shares of, of the responsibility as well as try to basically get the benefit when the project basically gives the, the output which is desired in the business environment. Projects can originate at different places, but the goal is the same. So, say for example, my project would be to build up 
a, 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 a car which exactly runs almost 100 percent of the time on electricity. So, obviously, my main focus would be on trying to build, build up the transmission system and the electrical uh, generation uh, system such that it meets the requirement of the or the vehicle industry. So, but if I am considering from the point of view of how the tire should be built, how the body should be built, all those works may have been done earlier based on say for example, the diesel and the petrol car. So, obviously, the work based on the different components of the car would or can start at different point of time, but the overall end result is to have a complete electrically driven car such that the end motive for all the people who are working in the project is only one. Project management sets into motion different other functions not directly related to the project management. So, it can be see for example, trying to procure different items for the project which has to be done through the business um, uh, environment or the business organization. It can be trying to basically take different amount of, of resources, it can be different type of financial resources, it can be different type of material resources, it can be different type of trying to buy out different softwares, try to get the export opinion. So, all these things can be done by the project management team to complete the project work. When uh, we, we, need, we use project management, few important things should be remembered. There should be unfamiliarity but unfamiliarity should not be to that extent where there is total uncertainty in the total in the whole project. So, if I am trying to basically build up a, 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 a car which only runs on electricity and say for example, this plan was being taken up in say for example, 1930s with respect to the plan of building up an electricity car, electric car in say for example, 2020s. So, the time scale in both these cases leave aside the technology, leave aside the development which has already taken place in science, science and engineering, but the overall plan of trying to build up a car in the 1930s would not make any sense because there the development of the car industry was being based on the premise that the availability of petrol or crude oil was for, for in the future was for a very, very long time and obviously, the, the cost of petrol and diesel were very less. So, hence trying to build up an electric car was economically not viable. So, obviously, environment taking care of the environment was not of that prime importance. Cost factor for electrical car was definitely very high. So, all these things basically were in such, such way that taking up a project to build up an electrical car was not at all suitable. But if you basically try to place this example in, in 2000, 2020 or 2030, then it definitely makes sense because there the overall environment based on which one would try to build up a electrical car has totally changed. Point one, the cost of crude and petroleum has increased tremendously. The overall concept of pollution and environment de degradation has come up in such a big way that is that is the main issue. The third point is the availability of crude, even if the cost can be brought down to the maximum possible extent is not unlimited. So, either today or tomorrow or 100 years down the line, the, the usage of petroleum would definitely dwindle down to almost 0 because it will be exhausted. So, if you try to understand the unfamiliarity charter or the regions based on which the same type of project were taken at two different times, you will understand the unfamiliarity based on which the environment the project can be taken up is very important based on which a particular person or a group of person would talk or work for a project. Magnitude of the effort would be definitely be not very high because consider you want to build up a, a, a fusion machine or say for example, you want to basically tap uh, some uh, type of rare earth materials to get some very precious um, uh, diamond or titanium whatever it is and considering the overall cost is very high. So, obviously, it does not mean that you are going to invest your whole amount of money to build up a project for which the cost initial sunk cost or initial working capital based on which you are going to work would be very high. So, obviously, it would mean that you would not take up that project. The changing environment is also an issue. Like coming back to the first example, 
there the issues are environment, environment means the general the mother nature, the, the environment based on which it was working was not at all the lobby based on which they had to basically change their concept of trying to build up a car on, a, on an electrical motor that become the lobby becomes very strong. So, if the environment or the overall atmosphere based on which you are trying to build up a machine or, or some concept for which the resistance was very high, obviously you would not build up that system or if the resistance to push for that project or for that concept was very low, obviously you would not work for that. So, obviously changing environment has a huge implications to, for trying to build up or take up a project as such. Interrelatedness is an issue like as if you consider we know always that the, uh, the, the prices of, of, um, of uh, electronic chip with respect to the compu um, uh, computers or any electrical devices is basically decreasing exponentially. So, obviously, if there is a market for, for computers, obviously, it mean, mean that there is a huge uh, incentive to build up very fast processing machines or fast processing chips which would basically give a boost to computers or computing processing machines which will in turn basically have a positive effect on trying to basically develop technology and engineering concept in trying to build up the fastest processing chips. Reputation of an organization is also important when the company is going to take up a project as such because if a company which has a very bad history or it has not been able to implement some projects to its fullest utilization without giving the general benefits as I talk with respect to a company which has been successful and which is known to basically deliver the projects to give the maximum benefits. So, obviously, people or a group of people or the society would be more inclined to take a positive note on those projects which are being taken up by organizations which are much positive in their, their uh, working concept and, and their reputation of how they basically implement the projects. Different forms of project management would be basic project management concepts using the PERT, the CPM, the JERT, the QJERT, the persistence diagram being the concept of slacks and so on and so forth would be considered. Then we have the pro program management or new venture manage management concept which, which I will very briefly discuss not to go into detail and then we will try to basically consider the concept of pro product management, project management from the point of view of different type of products whether in the industrial sector or whether in the service sector or whether in the government sector using different simple concept of the cases which for which obviously I will uh, discuss the basic or the salient points of the cases after I, I give the cases and then I will basically discuss that how those type of projects or the in learning um, process which we which we get from the cases can be utilized for the concept of project management. Characteristics of the projects would be the attributes or the characteristics of the main variables based on which you are trying to basically uh, understand how the project is working. The environment and the boundary under which the project is working or the scope based on which the project will work and what are the limitations for the, the what are its positive points, negative points, those would be considered. What are the objectives? So, is are the objectives to increase the profit? Are the objectives to give the maximum social benefit? Are the objectives to have a bridge in a particular section of the, of the river joining two cities or are the objectives basically to give uh, free drink, uh, drinking water to one district in, in India? So, whatever the objective is, the project would basically be utilized or, or planned in such a way that the objectives are met, met as per the norm based on which the project was started. The structure of the system, who are the project management managers, what is the organization, what is the philosophy, what are the cost implications, they definitely those should be considered. The inputs and the processes and the output should also be considered in, in depth. So, inputs can be man, can be machine, can be amount of money, can be resources, can be building or the land whatever it is, they should be analyzed in the proper sense. And, and whether you need designers, whether you good, good engineers or whether some extra amount of information is needed, whether you have to hire experts from different industries, so that have to be uh, looked into. 
what are the processes based on which the project would be implemented. If it is a mechanical pro engineering project, whether it is an electrical engineering project, whether it is the government uh, initiative, so what are the processes involved? Is, does it involve engineering concept, building a bridge? So, all these things have to be noted down very carefully and based on the inputs and the, and, and the processes, the main outputs would be analyzed such that the output based with the objectives which are to be made makes sense. So, outputs if they are in rupees and you want to base and, and, and it becomes only a profit uh, making project where at the end of the day your main motive is to basically provide free drinking water in one district in India. So, if that cost become very high, so obviously that it does not make sense to have the objectives and the outputs which are totally at loggerheads to each other. The constraints and the conflict should also be taken in consideration like say for example, if I am trying to build up a um, uh, 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 dam in an area where the rain water or the flow of, of water through the river is very, very low or many minimal or it dries up, then obviously it does not make sense for us to build up a dam because the, the overall structure or all the cost based on which the government would be planning to build up a dam would not basically give the benefit because the water is not there in the river. The stages of the project management are the systems concept should be considered, the system definition and preliminary design should be done, the detailed design and development of the project should be analyzed in, in such a way that it makes sense with respect to the project objective which is there. So, the system production and fabrication should be done in such a way that all the inputs and all the processes are in, in line such that they meet the overall output and the objective based on which the project is working. The detailed design and development um, of, of each and every nitty gritties of the processes should now be analyzed one the, once the overall macro idea is fixed and the system operations and the support system should be done in such a way that it meets the overall guidelines of the projects based on which the work is being done. So, project management development cycle basically consists of the project life cycle. So, project life cycle can have basically an initial phase which is on an upward trend, then there would be a, a temporary phase where the demand of the project or demand of the product or demand of the service basically slowly tapers down or is constant and after its utility life is over, the life of the project or the life of the product based on which the project was developed basically starts decreasing. So, our main motive would be to manage the product life cycle in such a way that it makes sense to build up the project on those lines. The system development cycle should be such that the conception phase, the definition phase, the execution phase and the operation phase are in tandem with the overall project life based on which the project had been decided. So, with this I will end the fourth uh, class. And, um, and then we will, when we start off the fifth lecture, I will just give a very brief preview of whatever you have covered in the last four lectures and then continue with our fifth, sixth and so on and so lectures before we start actually solving a problem. So, I hope the my, my students are have started uh, getting a feel of what we mean by project management. It is basically a conglomeration of using the quantitative techniques as well as the qualitative techniques. Even though I, I am for the time being going into the qualitative techniques, still I will request my students to please have a look at the books which I have referred, try to read them, understand them and then when I, when I go into the quantitative techniques, go into the port CPM, I am sure they will be able to appreciate the concepts which I have gone through in the initial part in a much better way. Thank you very much.